Well, good morning. This is Bert Williams uh, for the Carlisle Council on Aging, bringing you our monthly program. And uh, good, good to see you again. Um, at our head table this morning, we've got Nancy Jacin from the Friends of the Carlisle Council on Aging, Angela Smith, our program and outreach coordinator, our fearless leader, leader David Klein. And our guest today is uh, Jason Sutterman, who's going to tell us about downsizing, cleaning out uh, his company as Lifestyle Senior Services. So David, it's been a while since I've seen you. Have you been away? Um, I have not been away. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was you, <laughs> Maybe it was me that's been away. It's good to see you again. I did, I missed your fantastic um, um, boat voyages. Ah, uh, yes, you did. And and uh, I've, I've heard good reports, Bert, and we're so happy to have you back hosting, back where you belong. As Thank they, you. As they Thank say. you. And I believe on the boat trips, the the both the um, the, um, the 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 COA staff appreciation trip, and the recent trip um, where I took folks out on the boat, I believe I brought back as many as I took out. <laughs> That's always a good thing. It is a good thing. Especially in this day and age. It is a good thing. So <laughs> Bert, what's, what's so, happening with the COA? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into something slightly non-COA related, but, but it is related, and that's the um, Concord Carlisle Community Chess. By the time people see this um, presentation of this show, the Community Chess will be into its October uh, annual drive. Mm-hmm annual drive, which begins in October. And it's very interesting, actually, for me, because growing up um, uh, being a Monopoly board player and in the Philly area, and as many people know that really know the original Monopoly, most of the most of the properties are are from the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that the community chess actually existed. Really? Yeah. So, um, but um, like um, several of the organizations, including the, the Friends of the Council on Aging that um, support the uh, Carlisle Council on Aging, the community chess really is a vibrant commu- um, contributor to the community, to many organizations, both in Concord and Carlisle, mm. and regionally, because they support Minuteman Senior Services, which indirectly supports our activities. Yes. So I want to give them a plug. Um, their offices are, are in um, um, Concord Center, mm-hmm. and, uh, um, um, you know, uh, they, are ha- they supply some funding for us for our social worker, which we really appreciate. And this past year, they came up with a little bit of extra funds for some new outreach that we're trying to do. Um, you know, and so they collect funds uh, for the communities uh, in which they serve and distribute funds to to nonprofit organizations and organizations that. Uh, That's right, and, and they're and they're pretty vibrant. Um, uh, organization themselves. I think they've, they, they fundraise, they, they raise like a half a million dollars or something yes. like that yeah. Yeah, in a given year. Um, secondly, um, we're going to be having a, our um, COA intergenerational road race on November 12th. Um, this will be the fourth edition of that road race. Now, intergenerational, does this mean children racing seniors? This means uh, children racing seniors, seniors racing non-children, seniors racing children. Everybody seniors, racing. Everybody's racing themselves. But there are two <laughs> versions of the race. There's a one-mile walk-run, uh-huh. and then there's a 5K, which does tend to be more competitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, amongst the really young kids, the one-mile is actually pretty competitive. We've actually had... You know, a, a kid, uh, you know, like 12 years old, beat everybody, regardless mm. of age. Mm. So, um, and he wasn't being chased; he was he was running on his own. I think it was a she. A she. Yeah, <laughs> I think there were several she's. We shouldn't be surprised. We should not be surprised. No. Exactly. Hooray! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, the 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 road race. Um, the website is up where one can register for it. Mm-hmm. It's www.lightboxreg.com. dot mm-hmm lightboxreg.com, all one word. And what you do is you go there and you scroll down and you find the Carlisle Intergenerational Road Race. In the past, it has been associated with the Veterans Day. Because mm-hmm. We've always had it either on Veterans Day or nearby. And, and this year, it's going to be nearby. It's going to be on the Monday after Veterans Day. Mm-hmm. So the school will be closed. And also, uh, Veterans Day being on Sunday, um, we w- if we did it on that Sunday, we wouldn't have... Uh, um, we wouldn't be allowed to use um, FRS uh, when it happened. No. So 
for practical purposes, we've moved it to Monday. But it's kind of a special year. It's it's the hundredth anniversary of the armistice that ended World War One, mm-hmm. and so you know, for a lot of purposes, for a lot of reasons, um, we we wanted to make sure that this race still still occurred. Yeah, this is the third or fourth year you've this done. Is, it? This is the fourth year. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, Angela is going to be talking a little bit about the. Um, Alzheimer um, walk that the Council on Aging supports. And um, I think that going forward, the road race that, you know, if we can make it into a money maker rather than a kind of a money loser, which it has <laughs> been, <laughs> then, then maybe we'll pick a, a, um, a charity and Alzheimer's being the, probably the fight against Alzheimer's, the most likely charity to support. Mm. Um, and of course, we also want to support our veterans um, in any way we can. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's what I've got for the moment. Okay, thank you. Well, I think the flow is probably to uh, speak with Jason, who's got to uh, move on. So, Jason, tell me something about yourself. Tell me something about Life Cycle Senior Services. What is that? Life Cycle Senior Services is a company that's grown over the past 20 years from just me uh, cleaning out a, a basement as a as a something to do mm-hmm. to um, a modest beginning, a very modest beginning. Uh, and um, it's grown into something that's actually uh, incredibly important these days. Um, we've realized that a lot of folks need assistance at many different levels, um, not just downsizing or, in, or estate liquidation, but also just simply organizing their home on a regular basis. Um, we obviously have an aging community. The boomers are referred to weekly, if not daily. Um, we've all got stuff. We've all got families. Um, sometimes folks need a significant amount of help to keep the stuff in order or when they're just simply getting ready to see the kids off to school, they're leaving ho- the house. They need to go from a four bedroom down to maybe, oh, a studio condo downtown like, you know, mom and dad have been dreaming about. Yeah. Um, and we can provide assistance at many different levels. I've been to your website. Uh, and what is the website? It's lifecyclepro.com. Right. And you list a variety of services. What do you do? Is there something that you do most of? Primarily estate liquidation and downsizing. But as we've moved through uh, and in, well deeper into that market uh, with the professionals we work with, various agencies, including Minuteman, uh, Jewish Family and Children's Service, and a number of guardianships, legal guardians, attorneys, et cetera, um, we've realized that our wheelhouse is expanding, um, that in some instances we're working at a protective service level so folks can remain home in a sanitary space. Mm-hmm. Um, these can be ongoing weekly visits um, or just one time. Um, in some instances we're you know, helping a, a homeowner uh, retain their home by referring them to professional services, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, roofers, etc. Um, and sort of keeping an eye on things, making sure referrals get in, and that the family, who could be far and wide across mm-hmm. the country, sometimes across the world, that they stay informed with how their elder's doing, um, or, or family. Um, in some instances, it's families who are working all day, and they just don't have the ability to get ready to move to another location. So you've been doing this for a number of years. Um, this, this, your current company's been established for about 10 years. Yep, 10 years. 2008 is when we LLC'd. Prior to that, it was, you know, uh, I was running a bicycle shop. And when the boss said, well, they're not throwing money at us anymore, 39 hours a week for everybody, is when I started to really pick up in the off season, um, doing literally estate liquidation and just, you know, doing organizational assistance. And so how does a typical um, account come about? You're not knocking on doors. Somehow you get a phone call from somebody to do something. What's that call like? Uh, Usually out of the blue, and it's usually uh, a phone call. I get someone quickly says their name and says, I got your name from so-and-so. It could Uh be a realtor, an attorney, a friend, uh, what have you. And I take the call, listen to the story, decide whether or not we can assist right then, set up a date. Um, and then when I finally meet them again, I can actually get who they, refer, they, who they were referred to by, mm-hmm. to us. But is it the client uh, typically calling you, or is it a, w- a fiduciary or a, an attorney, as you say? Or I would say 50-50. It mm-hmm. really is. Okay. Um, we've worked uh, heavily in the, the guardianship world. 
um, and heavily in the advocacy world. Mm-hmm. Um, n- now that we're in Carlisle, we're realizing that there's a, a, a lack of the type of service that we do out here, at mm-hmm. least the breadth that we do. Mm-hmm. There are certainly a number of downsized estate liquidators out there, but we offer a, a catalog of services that go well beyond. So you get the call, you go out to the house, you make an appointment with someone. Absolutely. You show up there, and what happens? Well, we see what's going on. Sometimes we're met with a relatively orderly space. Um, it just needs some organizing, mm-hmm. you know, some general maintenance. Uh, sometimes our clients are, you know, they, they just don't have it in them anymore to, mm-hmm. to keep on top of things. We see maintenance issues crop up quickly. Um, and... You know, that that is usually a tour of the home, a discussion of uh, the intent, the ideas of priorities. Um, if it's a bit outside of what our focus is, uh, we do have a, a, a catalog, I guess, mm-hmm. of professionals that, you know, like I mentioned, they're either roofers, plumbers, et cetera, that we would refer them to um, and then just help them navigate that process. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we found is very important to keep family members um, or who's the responsible, uh, you know, the exchequer, if you will, um, informed about things um, and make sure that the process is going along accordingly. So do we have two general situations, one where the client's going to remain in the home and one where they either have already left uh, on a stretcher or whatever or, or they're going to be going? Is it sort of break into that? Yes, we definitely have a pretty good cross section. Sometimes, uh, you know, tragically, um, some of our visits are preceded by a fall. Um, mm-hmm. That's not unusual. Mm-hmm. Um, if we can get in prior to any type of you know situation like that, we can assist decluttering, making sure that you know whatever ambulatory devices are needed to navigate the home can navigate the home, and then make recommendations to. Um, some contractors who do safety bars, grab bars, that sort of thing, uh, work with the guardian or the advocate to make sure that that stuff's followed up with. Uh, we typically provide a report to whoever ha- is you know hiring us um, mm-hmm. as to where we left the situation and when our next appointment will be and what mm-hmm. sort of hot points we need to make sure get addressed. Um, it's been quite a development. Uh, over the years just to see what people need and all the different scenarios that are out there because everyone's space is unique and everyone's space is unique uh, different and there are so many characters that we've fallen in love with over the years homeowners or not um, that have just been great to work with and honestly some folks can be very difficult but when we have a good heart-to-heart conversation we're able to to make the place safe and ideally help them remain home. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are instances where that just won't work. Sometimes homes are that far gone. So one of the services that your website mentions is digital inventory service. Can you tell me about that? Yes, that's uh, the first step in typically a place where we've got a decedent. Um, there's an executive or a trustee. Um, that's sort of the norm. But mm-hmm. what we're also seeing is that folks are giving us a call because of the downsize piece. Because what? Of a downsize. They are, oh. they want to organize their basement. They want their basement back. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. My kid's stuff is here. They've already left yeah. for college. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I don't want all this junk that I've accumulated over mm-hmm. the years. We'll go in for a visit, uh, quick assessment, assess value. Everyone has sort of the Mona Lisa theory. Uh, it's a Mona Lisa. Uh, it's worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, the reality is today what you saw on TV doesn't hold water. What, what do people think is value? I'm thinking of dark furniture sure. and even silver. Mm. What do people think is valuable? That, and I'm thinking of, of, a, of my mother's fox fur, which to her was very valuable. Mm. The, we start with a pluck test on the furs. If any hair comes out and it's dry, it's... How oh, interesting. We usually identify those things to go to uh, a rescue, a rescue shelter for pets. Um, we were, or if the if the if the fur do, does pack the pluck, pass the pluck test, but it, the seams are blown out, we would refer it to a furrier for repairs. Um, otherwise, any sort of scent or anything like that for any clothing, for that matter. 
that just needs to go away. It's not so, worth donating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the furs are always a touchy subject because, you know, someone had it. Someone's grandmother, yes. great grandmother had it. The, the fox stoles with the eyeballs hanging yes. out. Yes. <laughs> you've seen, you've was, seen this piece. Oh, so, yeah, several times. <laughs> <laughs> At least. And there's all like the taxidermy uh, pieces. Uh, we see those too. Mm -hmm. uh, oddly, well, they actually attract high dollars. You know, Do I, they won't, really? I won't say thousands. I should, that mm -hmm. maybe I misspoke by saying high dollars, but mm -hmm. you'd be surprised—a couple hundred dollars for mm -hmm. a mounted deer. And the dark furniture that cost a, a bundle to the buy. Empire stuff, the federal stuff, the Queen Anne. Um, these days, that is just out of fashion. It's cool stuff. Someone has to have a barn. They have to stockpile this stuff because in 40 years it's going to be cool again. Mm -hmm. um, but we see a lot mm -hmm. of like antiqued or uh, what do they what do they call this? Um, the distressed look. They paint it and beat it with chains and things <laughs> and they make it new again. Um, but these pieces are big. They're heavy. Even donating them has become a challenge, believe it or not. Donation outfits don't want pieces that takes two people to move. They have insurance. <laughs> they don't want to use their workman's comp on moving old furniture mm -hmm. around. Um, with, there's also a mildew and mold level, depending on the space. Um, the, the scene these days is usually a younger buyer um, for our auction. When, when we take the inventory and we're done with it, um, the, we usually white paper the inventory so that can be shared digitally with the family. Mm -hmm. This is jumping back to and the So inventory. tell me about the inventory, how you do it. We go through the entire home. With a camera. With a camera and a little application. We can make short descriptions and mm -hmm. take lots of photographs. Mm -hmm. You're putting that right into the computer. Right in. We upload it. We have an auction partner who's an e-auction social media uh, mega machine. So you um, wind up with a catalog of everything that is going to be sold. Absolutely. Or everything that needs to be seen by the family. Because this white paper, which is a digital catalog as well, when we share it digitally, it has photos. We share it with the family first. They get 48 hours or so. We want to keep the window So everything open. is categorized, not just the stuff that's going to be, because some is not going to be sold. If, if it's a pile of garden hoses, <laughs> we might just say garden hoses, mm -hmm. 200 mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get the idea. Um, the silver, we would lay that out for the pattern, make sure all the pieces are there put it back in the canteen that stuff gets shared with the family they can pick and choose what they do want to retain mm -hmm. more often than not though families the kids they have their furniture they've already moved out of the house it's been 15 20 years their house home is full or they're too far away to deal with the shipping and all this and stuff. so family members i was sharing with you a, a story before we mm. went on went on the air about one time when I went to an island in the Caribbean where my aunt in Salt Lake City wanted a bed that used to belong to her father in Ohio, mm -hmm. and I was supposed to get the bed back to Salt Lake City. Um, so you're not going to go to the islands and ship stuff from there, but you're going to ship stuff from, from that house to these family members. We, we would make arrangements. So we would prepare the items after that they, uh, the items were selected. We would pull them out of our catalog, our auction catalog, what would be our auction catalog, wow. and prepare them. Um, and either they would make arrangements for a shipper themselves, mm -hmm. or we would just charge time mm -hmm. and materials to set that up. Mm -hmm. We would pack and then have the shipper come and do it. Mm -hmm. um, I did get flown down to Boca Raton for 36 hours for an art pack job. And Somebody had to do it. I, and when it's terrible having that Bloody Mary <laughs> on the end. Oh, I, can see, I, can see, I can see the fatigue in your eyes. Very, very tiring moment. <laughs> David. Jason, um, what's your geographical, um, speaking of flying to Boca Raton, mm. um, what's your sweet spot? Well, originally we were Metro Boston, Somerville, Winter Hill area, um, but that didn't prevent us from working out in Lunenburg, Fitchburg, um, South Shore. Uh, we actually, as we were speaking earlier, we just wrapped up a job in Abington, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, right now, moving into the Carlisle area, um, being and looking at the coverage swath of some of the agencies we work with we are kind of in the sweet spot uh, but that doesn't prevent us from going to the folks that need us we respond 
primarily to the folks that really need the assistance. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, dollars and cents is a business. We have to support our business. Um, so if, if that works, that's great. Um, we do within that structure, um, we've started to build sort of a pay it forward uh, category. So whether it's ambulatory devices or furniture, we've got clients who need a new bed. Well, we can't sell beds, but if they come out clean of no bed bugs or something like that, then well, they get the bed frame, you know? Um, if someone needs a dresser, a bureau, something to assist them organizationally, like I've got a client with 19 sets of Revere wear. He doesn't need all of it. So we'll box that up and we'll find someone who does need mm -hmm. it. Um, moving into Carlisle has provided us some more space, so I'm able to warehouse a small amount of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and please, if you know, if someone is looking for someone, I think there's some contact information on here. Um, I, want to, I, I want to talk about costs in a moment, mm. uh, but our time is winding down. So, is there anything I haven't asked you about the company that you would like me to cover, Angela? Did you have a question? I, I just want to point out that Jason and his family moved into the old Congregational Church, mm -hmm. so he's a member of our community, Good. and um, he's already started helping with some phone calls for some of the seniors that are downsizing to mm -hmm. help them understand what they can do themselves and so um, I wanted to make sure we welcome him here as part of our community Thanks before so he leaves. I'm guessing it's the ice cream that may have drawn him. That's Maybe. <laughs> that certainly helped. We're into strawberry and chocolate over mm. at the house. <laughs> <laughs> so it, ha it has been a fantastic move and we're really excited to be here. Good. Our kids are really enjoying it. Um, and the community has just been fantastic. Uh, I grew up in a small town in southern New Hampshire before moving mm -hmm. to Somerville um, back in the early 80s when it was Somerville. Um, and moving out here is just a, a nice, refreshing reboot. And I really hope our kids can take advantage of it. I think they already are. Good. So. Anything I, I, I do want to talk about cost. Was there anything else that you, that you wanted to hit that we haven't talked about? I, I think we've covered most of it. All right. Why don't um, we talk about money then? What's this costing clients? Well, the base rate uh, for a single staff to come and do some organizational work is 65 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, when we double up and we're doing in-home uh, work uh, as a team, uh, we reduce it to 110. Um, if there are fiscal or financial needs um, to meet, we are amicable to having a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because we offer a second market option, um, there are opportunities, depending on items that need to be downsized, sold, to see if we can do some offset. Um, typically, our projects are based on an offset if we're doing an entire property. The auction piece, if that's possible, creates an offset for the entire project. For small, small jobs, one-offs, you know, we'll do two or three hours with a client. Um, it's either private pay or perhaps it's covered by, you know, an insurance of some sort, mm -hmm. um, which can all be navigated between myself, Council on Aging, and any agency that's, that, that we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so costs can be deferred or reduced in a manner that makes things work. This stuff cannot be out of reach for everybody. It has to be within reach. Yeah. It's imperative. Okay. Well, it's certainly a valuable service that uh, a lot of us can use. And, um Glad to see you in town, and um, I'm good. Good luck and good wishes for your uh, for your growing business. Thank you so much for having me. It's fantastic. Great. Angela, have you got some things that we want to talk about? I do, but before I get started, I wanted to um, remind people that the Alzheimer's Association walk is supposed to have been yesterday, which would have been September. Um, 16th and it, it did not occur because of the gas crisis in Andover mm -hmm. so we'll be walking sometime in October we don't have the date yet but I went on the Alzheimer's website on Saturday and found that we are the 14th highest um, team so my goal is to see if we can get in the top 10 so if you're out there and you know somebody that's had some sort of memory issue or you have the sympathy for the people that are facing it, which could be us since one in three seniors die with it, 
uh, then I would hope you would consider either walking with us or, if possible, making a donation. And you can make a donation at the Alzheimer's Association website, or you, we have a can like this at Ferns, or you can stop by the Council on Aging office, and we have hard copy forms that you can mail in with a check. So we're trying to fundraise for Alzheimer's research. Research and support for the people that have it. And this, and this walk is just you're looking for sponsors to sponsor you and, and fundraise in that way. And people to walk. And so maybe walk. they, uh, they want to walk and they want to get their own sponsors. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, do you have any expectation or hope of a dollar amount that you're hoping to raise? Um, so far we have, I think, $7,200 as our goal. We've collected about $6,300. Mm -hmm. um, oh, nice. I'd like to make it more like eight. Mm -hmm. if we could, mm -hmm. at least. We have a moving bar, and we have somebody who's very good at moving that bar. <laughs> <laughs> higher, <laughs> higher and higher. Is there something that drives your interest in Alzheimer's? Um, being the outreach person for the Council on Aging, I'm the one that talks with a lot of the spouses that are dealing with people who have this horrible, horrible disease. Yes. And... Three times already, I've had a spouse call and tell me how they're being abused and ask me what I can do to help them. Having the spouse call you to say they are being abused in their home by? Because by, by somebody that has Alzheimer's. Because often, aggressiveness is one of the side effects of the disease, and you are taking people who are very lovely, soft, gentle people, but they get frustrated, they can't control how they feel, and maybe they shove a little too hard. Maybe they you know, push, maybe they slap, maybe they don't want to take a shower, so they get a little violent. Interesting, I hadn't thought of that aspect of it. So you get more than, I don't care, one phone call like that, and you talk to the person for weeks and weeks and mm -hmm. months as mm -hmm. the disease progresses until they finally realize they can't do it alone, yeah. Yeah. then you want to do something to help. Yeah. You want to make sure that there's more research to prevent it from happening, that if there is anything that we can do to make sure that all the people that are our age don't get it, then we want to do it. Yeah. So that's what drives me. Well, it's an epidemic uh, in my own family. I watched a family member slip into dementia, and it's a, it's a gradual, uh, there was never any violence, but there was just a gradual degradation. And um, it's in, it was interesting to me to see that, uh, just thinking in terms of memory, that, that much of the information really is retained in the person that's, that's losing that. And with the right cues, you can often tease the information out. It's older the, information. It's, yes, it's the recall mechanism. Right. But I hadn't thought about the uh, the toll on the caregiver. That is, well, I've thought about it a bit, but uh, I, I wasn't the primary caregiver. And so that must be very, very wearing. It because goes right around the clock. Right. It, and they, some of them walk and they walk out of the house, they get lost, yeah, yeah. some of them become incontinent. It's a horrible, yeah, horrible yeah, disease. Yeah, yeah. And in the, just in the 19 years I've been in town, I've seen some people who formerly were sharper brilliant. than I, than Brilliant. Brilliant. Shar sharper some than of I, the smartest people I know yeah. have, have fallen into it. Uh, just um, so very So I don't know what to do other than to try to help with the research. Yeah, well, that's good motivation and, as I say, good on you. <laughs> so what else would we want to know about from the COA this month? Well, we've got our typical litany of activities, which uh, we could start to run through. Is that is that? Yeah, please okay. do. Um, Monday, October 1st, if, if, if this gets on before October 1st, um, Joanne Willens. I don't know if you know Joanne. She's I just happened to drive her to Marblehead a few days ago. Okay. She, <laughs> she's organizing what, uh, what we refer to as uh, Joanne's Restaurant Review. Yes. And uh, she's got a trip to Manja Manja coming up in Belrica 
on the 1st. Please register by the 24th. And she loves that place. She loves that place. I haven't been. I, have you I haven't been? either, but she yeah. says the food is great. Uh, please call Joanne if you're interested. She's at 978-371-8023. Mm -hmm. 978-871-8023. And, uh, and let her know that you're interested, and we'll mm -hmm. figure out um, getting you a ride. Um, or, um, um, or will, or if you want to drive yourself, you can just meet the group yes. there. Um, also, she's got another um, restaurant review coming up, Aviva Cacina in Westford, Monday, November fifth. So she's doing, she's doubling up on the Italian restaurants. It looks like, um, and it's the same situation. You know, give her a call if you're interested in that trip. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're interested and you just can't go on that particular date. That happens, I'm sure, with your boat trips. You know, you know, we've got 100 people that are interested, but only 10 that are, can go on that date. Yeah, and then the weather throws in its bit. Exactly, exactly. Um, Bert, I understand that uh, Nancy J. Seen, who is our representative from the Friends, um, has to leave shortly, so I, I want to defer to her before coming Would that back be Nancy it. sitting at the end of the table there? Nancy sitting at hey. the end of the table, yes. <laughs> Nancy, what's happening with the Friends? Okay, well, um, I know that people watching this program are very familiar with the Council on Aging, but um, I just wanted to sort of reintroduce the friends of the Carlisle Council on Aging to people, in case they didn't know. In 1994, this group was uh, created, um, and it's a charitable group. It's um, a 501c3, um, and it's all volunteer, and what we do is our mission is to um, create enrichment for Carlisle seniors and promote their health and well-being. And we work closely with the COA and also um, it, uh, and through them, we help to provide services and um, experiences that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Um, so um, let me just run down a few of the things that we do. Good. Um, we, uh, or our funds, go to um, uh, providing fuel assistance and food certificates to qualified seniors. We underwrite medical services and equipment. We um, help with conducting uh, podiatry clinics and blood pressure clinics. Mm -hmm. We also um, uh, provide funding for part of the COA transportation program. We give money to the library for um, large print publications, mm -hmm. uh, just a host of things. Um, but also, we provide uh, funding for, or actually, we, we co-sponsor educational and cultural programs with the, Gleason, the Friends of the Gleason Public Library. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about those, because the ones that are coming up this fall. Um, it, they all... These programs are always put together by three very important people, Angela Smith, Estelle Keast, and Martha Feeney Patton. Mm -hmm. Patton Feeney? Who is now the new Patton. No, Feeney Patton. Feeney Patton. Who is now the new library director. Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, they do just a wonderful job mm -hmm. um, putting these together. Um, they are generally held, they are going to be held between the end of September through the end of October and for the most part they will be on Wednesday afternoons at 1 30 there will be one that's changed and I'll talk about that in a minute um, so um, there are three presenters this year all of whom have been here before mm -hmm. the first one um, Dr. Gary Highlander mm -hmm. will be talking about America by the book and he is going to be connecting the fiction of a time with the cultural and political and historical events of the time. Interesting. And so on September 26th, he'll be um, doing the um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. On October 3rd, he'll be talking about Grapes of Wrath. Then uh, Richard Travers will be coming back and he is, of course, the musician. And when he comes, we not only get to hear about the music, but we get to hear some of the music. And he's going to be talking about American music this year. And um, on October 10th, he will talk about the Great American Songbook, the mm. sort of um, the music of the early 20th century. 
And then on um, the 17th, the 17th of October, he will be, uh, will have, um, he'll be talking about Leonard Bernstein, of course, our born and bred in Massachusetts, very important to us. And then our third presenter is going to be uh, Professor Jason Gennetti. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the, he is coming back to talk about religion again, which he's done in the past, but this time it will be Eastern religions. And on the 24th of October, he with 25th. Oh, right. Thursday. This is the one. This is the one that's changed to the 25th, so which is a Thursday. So if you're looking in your newsletter, it says the 24th. It's been changed to the 25th because of a conflict with his schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for grabbing that. Um, and he'll be talking in that one on the 25th. He'll be talking about um, Hinduism and the beginning of Buddhism. And then on the 31st, 30. He will talk about the spread of Buddhism to China and what happened when it met with Confucianism and Taoism. So these should be these are very popular. Um, if you haven't signed up for any, um, I encourage you to try. There's often a wait list, but give it a try because sometimes places become available. And um, if you are signed up, please make sure to go. Don't forget, and if you can't go, let the library know so that they have um, the opportunity to offer it to somebody else. And then there's one other thing. In, at the end, of, because we are a fundraising organization for the COA, um, our uh, annual appeal will be coming up in this, later this fall, and we are focusing our fundraising efforts on our flyer this year. So. You're going to love the flyer. So I would um, I encourage you to look for it in November. And then um, we won't be sending out other mailings. We'd like to try to reduce what gets into your mailbox. Um, but we um, hope that you will again join us in this effort. Um, Carlisle has always been generous, and we do thank you for that. Yes, I suppose the point has to be made. I mean, if I didn't know any of this, I would say, well, why doesn't whatever you do, why doesn't the, David, I'll address this to you because you're the numbers guy. So why don't you just go out and do all of this stuff that Nancy just talked about? No, oh, nobody really wants to hear from me, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no the, the, the truth is, is that um, town, uh, municipal employees are not a, a, um, allowed to, to solicit fundraising. Um, people can make um, donations, you know, if somebody passes away and you want to say donate to your favorite organization, there are several gift accounts in town that are set up, and mm -hmm. including for the, for the COA for transportation, fuel assistance, et cetera. But really, um, the Friends, um, the, the creation of the Friends organization, as Nancy pointed out, all the way in 1994, um, was to actually be actively soliciting uh, and raising money for our activities. And to put it in perspective, the town is, is pretty good to us. They, they support us, and our budget is about two-thirds of what we actually spend. Um, we, our budget last year from the town was 212000 and we spent about 309000 so uh, almost an entire 50 extra percent of, of, of the activities that we focus on um, come from outside fundraising and our single biggest um, fundraising. And, and that's the answer I was looking is for. Is the friends, yes. And if not for this other uh, avenue, then there would be lots of stuff that you do that wouldn't happen. We, that's right. We would definitely have to look around and decide and, and, and prioritize what, what we can do and what we can't do. Yeah. And we still do that. Well, mm -hmm. We try to be, um, you know, um, rational stewards yeah. of, the, of the assets. Yeah. And so I know we're not supposed to actively uh, fundraise at this time because of, uh, we like to not compete with the community just fundraising, but I'd just like to, to thank the folks at home who do support the Friends. It's your money that goes to the Friends who then channel that money onto the COA, and so I'll thank you in advance. And they work magic with the money that's uh -huh. given to them. So. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you. We have got about 18 minutes remaining, and so have we got 18 minutes worth of uh, COA stuff Somehow, to talk about? I think we can find a few things to talk about. Okay. Uh, we, we, were, we were talking about activities, um, and um, we've got a couple other trips coming up. One is called B 
being earnest. It's a play at the Greater Boston Stage Company um, that's being led by Lillian De Benedictus. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lillian, as many people who who love plays in our area know, is is has become the the, the godmother of um, of our play our trips to see uh, plays, whether they're musicals or dramas, and. Um, that is going to be held on Wednesday the 3rd. Um, we need to know, or she needs to know, earlier than that. So please reserve a spot with Lillian by September 26, which is up and coming. Um, she can be reached at 978-369-1848. 978-369-1848. Um, and it's a two-pronged thing. One is to reserve the ticket, and the other is to reserve a spot on our, our van, which, Bert, I think you might know something about it can really hold a maximum of 12 to 14 people. So we have to be careful that we stay within that limit if mm-hmm. possible. Um, also, um, we have a trip to the Peabody Essex Museum. On, That's a nice trip. That is a nice trip, Tuesday, October 16th. I've only been there once, but I really found it nice place. a fascinating place. Yes. And um, that's going to be uh, an eight entrance fee of $18. I didn't talk about the fee for the... Um, for the show, for being earnest. I think that's $37 per person. Mm. You know, um, for a play these days, that's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so the peop- getting back to the Peabody Exit Museum, if you could res- uh, call the COA and make a reservation by, um, or excuse me, call Joanne Willens by October 9th to reserve a spot, that would be helpful. Joanne's number again is 978-371-8023. And then um, on November 6th, we have a, a second running of our of our special guided tour of Boston with Stephen Collins, which we did run once, right? Yeah, last last year. Last year, and and it was very popular indeed. A guided tour of Boston. Yes, and and what we did is is Stephen Collins, who's an actor and a singer, has performed at various COA events over the years um, via the Cultural Council grants. Um, he he let us know that he did these tours where he talked about um, historical aspects of the city mm-hmm. and that they were popular. And finally, uh, last year we decided, um, Angela decided, you know, this would be something good to, uh, to do. And we hadn't done it. And occasionally we are looking for different things to do mm-hmm. just to change things up. Um, supposedly there's this person who gives these boat tours, but we don't want to <laughs> go too far afield on that. But, you know, that's an example of something else that's different. Mm-hmm. And so um, so Stephen does a good job. I mean, he, he, he's got a, a big, voom, booming a- actor's voice, mm-hmm. and uh, apparently he knows what he's talking about. Um, and so this is one of the few areas where we've actually not used our own vehicle because we can only hold a certain amount, mm-hmm. and we've gotten a bigger bus. Oh, really? And uh, jo- um, Nancy left, but we've, been, we've used the money – from the Friends grant to pay for that bus. And you did that last year? We did. Yeah. I, I, I'd forgotten about it. That's, that's interesting. You, maybe, you were, maybe you were away or who, what have you. Out in, out in he goes by the Constitution, Trinity Church, Copley Square, and they end up um, at No Name Restaurant. Oh. And so the people that did it last year loved it because they don't have to get up and walk. Mm-hmm. So for people that so they go, they stay on the bus throughout the day and just bus, get off at a see it. all of downtown Boston. He's um, a lecturer and he also teaches, so he's very good at the mm. historical facts. And do they get off the bus at each stop and visit? I don't or they, believe so. They I stay think on they the only whole time. get off to go to No Name and then finish at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so what's the cost for that? 50, well, it's fifteen dollars per person. But it, it, that's heavily subsidized because that's paying for a portion of either yeah. his fee or the or the or the cost of the bus, which, yeah. as some people may know, can run seven eight hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds like a nice take-in. It, it is because it's a whole. It's really a whole day trip. Yeah, and when is it again? That is Tuesday, November sixth. So, mm-hmm. so there's plenty of time to register, but um, but we we do have a, a wait list that uh, that occurs if it's oversubscribed. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're able to take. You know, over 20 people, maybe like even 25 the people. Large, okay, I was going to say some of the larger buses are 37 passengers. Yeah, I think they, I think Debbie booked a 24. Mm-hmm. 20, 24 I passenger think. vehicle. I, I mean, it, it's unfortunately these vehicles have gotten very expensive, yeah. and we do want to get them that are are decent buses with a, a restroom. Um, and a speaker system, and you know, to make it a, as yeah. enjoyable as possible. For You're probably not going to let me drive that bus. 
No, I don't think so. Well, the, <laughs> the, the, the good news, Bert, is that the b- bus comes with the driver. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so nothing against against anybody, any of our drivers. I, I don't take it, it comes, personally. It comes with much. the driver, right? <laughs> well, Joe, uh, uh, Angela, you've got. I'm sorry, I've been hogging all the time. Here. That's okay. So. Um, Besides taking trips, we like to feed our seniors. Of course. And we're going to go to the Chelmsford Crossing Lunch on October 4th, and that will be at St. Irene's, Mm -hmm. but the food is provided by Chelmsford Crossing. And Deborah Bentley, who did a um, program for us last year, she's a very good speaker, uh, is also Scottish, and she's going to give us a view of Scotland and... um, all about it and so that should be fun Mm. so we're going to have a nice lunch and then a delightful presentation after and then our coa lunch which will be october 18th at frs will be with doug schmazel i'm not sure i'm saying that correctly (laughs) but he's a singer and a guitarist and he does a variety of songs from the 1910s so i've gotten really good feedback um, about his performance, mm-hmm. and he came highly recommended. So we're looking forward to having him for the first time. Mm-hmm. And then um, we'll go on November 1st, will be the next Chelmsford Crossing Lunch, and that will be with the Savillard Light Opera Company will come and do a program. Ooh, that'll and be they've fun. they've done that in the past, yes. and they have some magnificent voices. Yes. And so we're very thrilled to have those back. And then we're going to do our regular COA coffee, which will be October 3rd at um, Village Court. And we will have our senior moments, which is at Burns, um, the second and fourth Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. And the COA provides a tray of pastry and Burns um, charges 10% less for seniors to have coffee. And then the men's breakfast, which you missed this month. I did, I did. Um, will be on the 11th, and uh, Jane has really got that down to a science. Your husband does a great job at that. I think so. He did. I mean, <laughs> well, you're prejudiced, so I, as, well, as an prejudiced. impartial observer, he does a great job. But I'm just amazed at how many things he provides. Yes. So this month he did Estrada and blueberry pancakes and sausages and beans and He had scrambled eggs and pastry and yogurt and juice and coffee and a fruit salad. So I think that is a tremendous take. I couldn't agree more. As you know, I used to have some involvement with that. And when I was involved, we warmed. Since your husband has come on board, he cooks. (laughs) (laughs) He does. And I didn't even know he knew how. Really? Well, um, hidden secrets. Yeah. He works really hard. He does a nice job. He really does. So um, we would love for more men to come. And we have a nurse. We're starting to bring the um, community nurse, mm-hmm. um, the Chenard grants that David and the Board of Health worked on. Mm-hmm. Um, part of that grant has allowed us to have a community health nurse, and we're working to putting um, not Minuteman Emerson Home Care in place to provide that. And this is for b- blood pressures at the for blood at, pressure at meetings. So, so the nurse for at least the next year for the men's breakfast and also the Chelmsford Crossing lunch will come from that grant. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful because the organizations that had provided those nurses for us for free Mm -hmm. could no longer do it. And I was not sure how I was going to find somebody to do it. So we try to get as much as we can for free. Good. So that's wonderful. And um, then we're also going to Neshoba Tech on the 26th of this month in September mm-hmm. and on 1010. And we're trying a new lunch, which will be passed by the time people see this. But we're hoping if it goes well, we will do it again. It's this week. Um, we're going to UTEC, which is an organization that helps students that may be heading on the wrong path get on the right path and Mm -hmm. teaches them culinary skills. And so we're trying them for the first time. 
uh, this week. So I hope that's a really good thing. So we'll have one more option mm -hmm. to give people to go mm -hmm. out and have lunch. Great variety of, uh, of venues there. We're trying. I guess we're going to have a flu clinic coming up, too. We, we will. Um, it is on the 12th, and we are waiting to get final word from Emerson, but we did request that we get the high dose, if at all possible. Oh, for the flu shots, yes. For the flu shot, but it will be on the 12th of October from Soon. 10 to 11.30 here in Clark Room in Town Hall. And... Um, Robbins Brooks is going to provide some refreshment. Mm -hmm. So you can come, get your flu shot, have a little breakfast, and uh, sit and chat with your neighbors. Very nice. And, I, and that's, I'm sorry, Bert, to interrupt, but that's free if you have your Medicare card? Or have insurance. Or if, if you have over, okay. mm -hmm. over 65, any kind of insurance. I always get the high dose, but is there any, is there, you, you say you're going to try and get the high dose. Is there some difficulty in getting that? It's more expensive, uh, and it hasn't been highly. There are some doctors that feels it's the <clears> risks <throat> of having the side effects are outweighed. Interesting, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, so I know last year my own doctor didn't want to really me to get How it. Interesting. He wanted me to get a regular shot, but I think now they're looking at maybe yeah. it's more. As one effective. who's taken them, I've had no. Uh, no, no effect. No ill effect. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. The other thing we also have coming up is we are doing the Medicare information. Um, so as you know, every year you have an opportunity to change your Medicare mm -hmm. health insurance, mm -hmm. whether it's your um, supplement or your drug plan. And so, and rules change and the regulations change. So in this room again on October 30th at 2 p.m. We will have an informational session on all the changes and what you should know. So if somebody's gonna become 65, they should probably come and listen. Mm -hmm. And if they're already 65, they probably wanna hear what their options are. I confess I have not seen the COA website recently. Is all the ins this information up on the COA website? Yes, because all of this is in our newsletter, mm -hmm. and the newsletter is on the town website, which is carlislema.gov. You look under Senior Services, and you'll see um, different buttons on the left side that mm -hmm. you can go down, mm -hmm. and one of them is the newsletter. Good. There's a transportation button, and there's a newsletter button, mm -hmm. or um, commun it's like COA Communications, mm -hmm. because in addition to the newsletter, we also have a... Um, a weekly uh, electronic email that goes out that yes. people can subscribe that's to. That's very useful, yeah. and it's been reformed. We have five minutes remaining, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, that's been reformatted in the last year or so. Right. It's much more readable now. Yeah, Maxine um, um, does a fantastic job, Doing one of our nice board job. members, um, and so does our staff in putting the information together. Yeah. It's basically taking the information that would be in the newsletter, updating it if it needs to be updated, yeah. and putting in things that didn't for one reason or another right. either couldn't fit into the newsletter right. or it occurred since then. So it's, you know, because it's weekly, it's more topical. Yeah. And if you're interested in that, uh, it's free. Just, just uh, let us know. Send us an email and let us know what your email is so that we can add you to the list. Yes. I just want to hit a few others, and I know you want to talk about our exercise classes. Four minutes We're doing to go. a program with our no Chinese pressure. students um, at the school. We do this annually, mm -hmm. and every year they teach us something different. And so I didn't hear the beginning of that. What is this? Every, we're going to participate in an intergenerational program at the school, Carlisle mm -hmm. Public School. Yes. With the Chinese class. With the Chinese class. And the eighth grade students will teach us calligraphy. And then before we leave, the kindergarten and first grade students will sing to us in Chinese. So if you've never come, it is so much fun. It is wonderful to work, leave knowing something you didn't know, and you leave smiling from the students. They really, they do a great job. And um, we also have the community chorus mm -hmm. tonight on the 17th of September is the first night. So mm -hmm. if you like to sing, come join us. 
And um, I'd also like to put in a quick plug for KISS, which is Knitting and Service, mm -hmm. which provides hats and scarves for the Cathedral on the Common, which is a homeless center. Mm -hmm. We are collecting on October 18th to bring into them everything that we've knitted. So if you knit or crochet, please consider doing one on your own and bringing it into the COA office or to FRS, and it will get brought into someone who is homeless. And you'd like those brought in by, again by what date? By October 18th. By October soon, okay. Three minutes left. Bert, we want to let you know that if you need, if you want or need exercise, that we have exercise every day of the week, during need, the week. I need exercise, it's true. And we have a tap class, uh, a tap dancing class, believe it or not, and no experience or partner required. Um, that's held at FRS, and that's on Mondays. Uh, Katrina Rotundi, who's one of our main instructors, mm -hmm. teaches that. The fee for September through November classes is $40, so it's mm -hmm. a good deal for... Mm -hmm. How many classes? Like 12 classes? Um, 10 classes? Well, it's a three-month program. Okay. A three-month program. If you would like to try any of these classes that we're about to describe for free, by all means, come take one for free. See how you like it. Uh, we're not here to, to steal anybody's money or anything like that, so no no pressure, but, mm -hmm. um, but give them a try. Mm -hmm. On Tuesdays, we've got two classes. We've got a Zumba Gold class taught in the morning by Katrina, um, and... That's at St. Irene, and also later in the day, a Tai Chi class, which is at 12.30, taught by Linda Sango, and that is also at St. Irene. Yeah. Um, on Wednesdays, we've got a line dancing class, which is, which is uh, popular amongst certain group of people that really do like it, and that's at St. Irene as well. The, the St. Irene classes, I mean, it's a hard floor, and, you know, it, it's conducive for, for a certain type of dancing. Um, and that's at 1.45 in the afternoon on Wednesdays. On Thursdays, we've got two classes, a fitness class at 9.45 here in the Clark Room and a cardio boost class um, at 10.45 um, that's here in the Clark Room. Occasionally, these classes have been moved somewhere else if the selectman or somebody needs this room, but usually it, it is held here in the Clark Room at, at Town Hall. And on Fridays, we've got um, a in very interesting class. It costs a little bit more money. Um, called SAMA, Senior Approach to Maintaining Agility. Mm -hmm. Angela takes the class. We've had other uh, board members and staff members who've tried it, and they really like it. Um, it is $100 for, for a 10-week class. Mm -hmm. So it's about $10 per class, but okay. it's really a unique class. Great instructor, Sarah Hanley, and before that, Sarah's father, Tony, taught this, Sensei Hanley. Um, I guess they're both Sensei Hanley, aren't they? Well, Sensei Sarah and Sensei Tony. Sensei Sarah and Sensei Tony. There we go. We it, got it's about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, I'm going to hand this off to Angela to see whether we've missed anything important. I, I just want to remind people we have our book club, which meets monthly at the library, and that's in our newsletter. And we hold meditation every Monday at Benfield. And we do have room for more people. So if you haven't meditated before, Give us a call because you do need to have some special training to before you start participating in the class. If you already meditate, it is at um, 1 p.m. on Mondays. As always, I am staggered by the breadth of activities and food events and uh, social events that you, you, sm the small staff turns out uh, for Carlisle seniors. So thank you very much. Once again, we've completed our program. I'm Bert Williams for the Carlisle Council on Aging. Hope to see you next month. Bye-bye.